Ultrasonic instrumentation plays a key role in today's periodontal debridement procedures. The use of ultrasonics continues to grow amongst clinicians and proper use and application is essential for optimal clinical outcomes. This video is provided by Dent Supply Serona and is to be utilized as a guide to enhance the clinician's use with ultrasonic instrumentation. This informational guide does not replace the Directions for Use Manual or DFU for any products shown. Always check your manufacturer's guidelines for recommended use of equipment. There are four standard inserts commonly used during initial gross debridement procedures. The Cavitron FSI-10, the Cavitron FSI-100, the Cavitron FSI-1000, and the Cavitron FSI-3 beaver tail. The standard diameter inserts are specifically designed for efficiently removing moderate to heavy deposits. This is the Cavitron FSI-10. It is designed for removal of moderate to heavy deposits and it can be utilized at all power levels. The Cavitron FSI-10 has a straight shank and can be used on all accessible tooth surfaces. After the clinician has filled the handpiece with water, seated the insert, selected the power, and adjusted the spray properly, instrumentation begins according to the treatment plan prescribed for the patient. The clinician begins by adapting the lateral surface of the Cavitron FSI-10 on the clinical crown and activates the foot pedal to begin the stroke. Adaptation will be in the transverse oblique approach in the healthier sulcus to prevent encountering the junctional epithelium and in a more vertical approach as indicated. The clinician adapts 2 to 3 millimeters of the terminal end and rides the anatomy towards the gingival margin in a vertical oblique orientation while maintaining an angulation of 0 to 15 degrees. When calculus is encountered, tap at the deposit in a multi-directional approach. Microfracturing the deposit and following with 2 to 3 millimeter sweeping strokes to flush the sulcus disrupts the biofilm and allows the clinician to assess the success of this technique. These steps should be repeated in a methodical, channel fashion, ensuring complete removal and thorough biofilm disruption. This is the Cavitron FSI-100. It is designed for removal of moderate to heavy deposits and can be utilized at all power levels. The Cavitron FSI-100 has two bends to the shank facilitating access to posterior teeth, aiding in adaptation. After the clinician has filled the handpiece with water, seated the insert, selected the power, and adjusted the spray properly, instrumentation begins according to the treatment plan prescribed for the patient. The double bend shank of the Cavitron FSI-100 allows the clinician to easily adapt this insert in the posterior region. This feature provides access into deeper pockets of the interproximal spaces where heavier deposits may be encountered. The clinician begins instrumentation by adapting the lateral surface of the Cavitron FSI-100 on the clinical crown and uses the back and or face of the insert tip as needed. The clinician demonstrates a transverse oblique approach, maintains 2 to 3 millimeters of adaptation, and 0 to 15 degrees angulation. The clinician continues scaling and demonstrates strokes in the horizontal, transverse, and vertical orientation to fracture and remove deposits. Utilizing an overlapping methodical stroke pattern is essential to achieve thorough removal of biofilm and calculus. This is the Cavitron FSI-1000. It is designed for removal of moderate to heavy deposits and can be utilized at all power levels. The Cavitron FSI-1000 has a triple bend and in cross-section is shaped like a square. Energy is dispersed from this design in a more powerful way due to the cornered cross-section aiding in effective removal at the line angles and interproximal surfaces. After the clinician has filled the handpiece with water, seated the insert, selected the power, and adjusted the spray properly, instrumentation begins according to the treatment plan prescribed for the patient. The clinician utilizes the Cavitron FSI-1000 insert for deposit removal along the line angles and interproximal surfaces where heavier deposits are present. The clinician will start by adapting the lateral surface of the Cavitron FSI-1000 on the clinical crown and uses the back and or face of the insert tip as needed. Utilizing a transverse orientation, maintaining 2 to 3 millimeters of adaptation, 
and 0 to 15 degrees angulation, the clinician utilizes strokes in the horizontal, transverse, and vertical orientation to microfracture and pulverize the deposits. Adaptation of the terminal end is essential for effective removal and protecting the tooth surface. Thorough biofilm removal and calculus is achieved with an overlapping methodical stroke pattern. This is the Cavitron FSI 3 Beaver Tail. It is designed for removal of calculus bridges and removal of heavy stain and can be utilized at all power levels. The Cavitron FSI 3 Beaver Tail has a rounded toe design which enables clinicians to adapt the toe for removal of heavy deposits in larger pieces and sections. After the clinician has filled the handpiece with water, seated the insert, selected the power, and adjusted the spray properly, instrumentation begins according to the treatment plan prescribed for the patient. The number 3 beaver tail will be demonstrated on the mandibular anterior region. The beaver tail insert is utilized for the removal of heavy deposits in this area. Once the foot pedal is activated, the clinician approaches the deposit in more of a straight-on approach due to the blunted tip of this insert. Adapting the insert under the deposit allows the calculus to break free in large pieces, allowing for more efficient removal. There is a slight vertical stroke when a ledge of calculus is lifted from the tooth. There are four inserts in the slimline family commonly used during periodontal debridement procedures. The Cavitron FSI Slimline 10, the Cavitron FSI Slimline 1000, the Cavitron FSI Slimline Right Curve, and the Cavitron FSI Slimline Left Curve. Following an initial gross debridement, the clinician will follow through with a finer debridement to ensure removal of lighter calculus, remaining biofilm, and endotoxins. The Slimline series are designed to be utilized for patients that present light to moderate calculus and tissue topography and or pocket depth which call for a slimmer diameter insert for access. This is the Cavitron FSI Slimline 10. It is designed for removal of light to moderate calculus and deplacking and should be used at low to medium power levels. After the clinician has filled the handpiece with water, seated the insert, selected the power, and adjusted the spray properly, instrumentation begins according to the treatment plan prescribed for the patient. The clinician will adapt either the lateral or back surface of the Cavitron FSI Slimline 10 to the clinical crown and float towards the gingival margin, maintaining 2 to 3 millimeters of adaptation and a 0 to 15 degree angulation. Depending on the patient presentation, the clinician will enter the sulcus or pocket in either a vertical or transverse approach. For demonstration purposes, we are utilizing the vertical approach for the patient with deeper periodontal pockets. As the clinician enters the sulcus, it is essential to assess the anatomy as the insert travels to the base of the pocket. If calculus is encountered, the clinician engages the terminal end of the deposit in a light tapping approach, followed by small sweeping strokes to provide lavage and assess the removal. It is imperative to ensure the complete removal by producing a stroke pattern that is overlapping and methodical. Haphazard strokes will leave the surface incomplete, contaminated, allow for biofilm to attach, and harbor the pathogens we are attempting to rid from the pocket. As the clinician moves toward the interproximal area, it is important to angulate the insert so that two to three millimeters of the terminal end is always adapted. Following the vertical orientation, the clinician will adapt in a transverse approach under the contact areas for complete debridement and approximately. Knowledge of each area of anatomy is essential for successful removal of calculus. A thorough periodontal charting and accompanying radiographs are also essential tools for effective ultrasonic instrumentation. This is the Cavitron FSI Slimline 1000. 
This insert combines a slim tip with a triple bend design with beveled edges, allowing for better adaptation around line angles and can be used at all power levels. After the clinician has filled the handpiece with water, seated the insert, selected the power, and adjusted the spray properly, instrumentation begins according to the treatment plan prescribed for the patient. The Cavitron FSI Slimline 1000 can be adapted at the line angles, the root concavities, and interproximally as well. The clinician will start by adapting the lateral surface on the clinical crown and uses the back and or face of the insert tip as needed. Strokes may be performed in a horizontal, transverse, or vertical direction as long as the clinician is methodical and covers every square millimeter. This is the Cavitron FSI slimline right and left curve. They are used for fine periodontal debridement in deep pockets greater than four millimeters. Utilizing these inserts provides maximum access and adaptability to root anatomy, including concavities and furcations. These inserts should be used at low to medium power levels. After the clinician has filled the handpiece with water, seated the insert, selected the power, and adjusted the spray properly, instrumentation begins according to the treatment plan prescribed for the patient. When access is indicated in deeper pockets, in particular the posterior teeth, a curved insert is often necessary to maintain true adaptation of the terminal 2 to 3 millimeters at all times. A review of dental anatomy is recommended so the clinician is familiar with the topography of the different molars and the corresponding concavities and convexities. Understanding the area-specific design of these inserts is essential for proper adaptation. The clinician must be able to identify the inserts by recognition of the shank and direction of the curvature of the tip. Memorizing colors or trying to read the stacks can be challenging and prove confusing for the clinician. Adapting the curved insert properly requires a fundamental knowledge of the tooth's anatomy and proper placement on the appropriate tooth surface. In order to identify which insert one is holding, it is recommended to begin by holding the inserts parallel to the floor with the points facing down or perpendicular to the floor with the points facing away from the clinician. The right insert will curve to the right and the left will curve to the left. It is also helpful to place the insert on the occlusal of the intended tooth, as demonstrated here, to see the curvature to ensure you selected the correct insert. After this is established, maintain a vertical approach and notice that the back of the insert is adapted to the surface you are entering. Utilization of all surfaces is indicated for proper adaptation in periodontal pockets interproximally. Begin on the clinical crown, float subgingively, riding the anatomy and clinging to the pellicle while always maintaining 2 to 3 millimeters of adaptation and no more than 15 degrees angulation. Navigating the pocket, Assess while entering and engage any deposit encountered with a gentle tap. Frequent, methodical, overlapping strokes are essential in the periodontal pocket to detoxify and debride every square millimeter. A haphazard approach will leave deposit and biofilm behind and limit the patient's response to therapy. As the clinician proceeds towards the interproximal area, proper adaptation is achieved by staying with the anatomy and following the topography of the pocket. Once thorough instrumentation has been achieved, the clinician returns to the line angle and with a vertical adaptation proceeds with channel stroke across the buckle allowing for tactile sensitivity to drive the stroke engagement. As seen here, the curved left insert 
is following the anatomy into the furcation and is maintaining the necessary two to three millimeters of adaptation. Proper adaptation is required to navigate the interproximal space successfully. A slight turn of the insert maintains adaptation around the line angle and assists the clinician to successfully debride the periodontal pocket. To debride the lingual surfaces of the quadrant, the clinician must switch to the left insert prior to beginning instrumentation. It is essential to remember that the contributors to root surface loss are excessive lateral force, incorrect angulation and adaptation, incorrect insert width and excessive power. Any of these factors may result in root substance loss and create grooves for biofilm to attach. The curved inserts are ideal to reach under the contact areas supergingivally in what is known as the transverse approach, similar to using a Nevi or a 204S posterior sickle scaler. The curved inserts can be adapted to the mesial and distal surfaces utilizing the lateral surface of the tip. Note in this demonstration, the clinician is using proper adaptation for transverse approach supergingivally under the contact. This is the Cavitron FSI Thinsert. This insert is 47% thinner than the Cavitron FSI Slimline 10. It provides access in difficult areas, including misalignments, interproximal surfaces, and areas of tight tissue. The Cavitron FSI Thinsert is ideal for completion of a staged instrumentation sequence to assess the areas for remaining deposit while performing thorough biofilm disruption. It is designed for removal of light to moderate calculus and deplacking. This sensor can be used at all power levels. After the clinician has filled the handpiece with water, seated the insert, selected the power, and adjusted the spray properly, instrumentation begins according to the treatment plan prescribed for the patient. The clinician will begin on the clinical crown, mindfully adapting two to three millimeters and angulating the insert no more than 15 degrees to the long axis of the tooth. The strokes are small, one to two millimeter overlapping to ensure thorough debridement of the biofilm in any light deposits. Due to the ultra thin diameter of this insert, it is imperative to maintain two to three millimeters adaptation of the lateral and or back surfaces of the insert at all times. Once the clinician has approached the line angle, the clinician will adapt more obliquely to allow adaptation under the contact. This is the Cavitron Soft Tip Ultrasonic Implant Scaler. This insert gently removes light to moderate plaque and calculus without damaging implant titanium abutment surfaces and should only be used at low power level. The implant insert is manufactured and designed to be utilized with a corresponding soft tip disposable prophy tip. This tip is removable for one time use and may not be used on any other insert. The Cavitron Soft Tip Ultrasonic Implant Insert should never be used without the Soft Tip Disposable Profi Tip. To prepare the Cavitron Ultrasonic Implant Insert for use, take a new plastic Soft Tip Disposable Profi Tip and place it point first into the hole in the end of the wrench. Insert the metal tip of the insert into the opening of the Profi Tip and twist one quarter turn while applying firm pressure to securely seat the disposable profi tip on the metal insert tip. Disengage the profi tip from the wrench and gently pull on the profi tip to verify that it is securely in place. After the clinician has placed the soft tip disposable profi tip with the wrench included, filled the handpiece with water, seated the insert, 
selected the power, and adjusted the water flow to obtain a fine spray, instrumentation begins according to the treatment plan prescribed for the patient. Dental implants and their titanium surface need additional consideration when choosing the proper debridement instrument. The sulcular environment and the mucosal seal is more fragile than the normal tooth and this requires a gentle approach and care when debriding in the sulcus. The insert terminal end is placed slightly subgingivally with a 0 to 15 degree angulation and 2 to 3 millimeter adaptation. Utilizing a 1 to 2 millimeter overlapping stroke will ensure thorough biofilm debridement. To prepare the insert tip for sterilization, keep the insert in the handpiece and place the tip into the insert in the slot on the wrench. Place your thumb and index finger over the disposable prophy tip. Gently push the handpiece downward and the tip will disengage. Discard the used plastic soft tip disposable prophy tip in accordance with applicable standards for disposable biohazard materials. Proceed with sterilization of the ultrasonic insert and soft tip wrench. It is recommended to always sterilize the insert and the wrench together.